Every door has a key. There's a key to every situation. Behind every unopened door, there is a mystery. And the opening of this door introduces us to another in the series, the key. And, gentlemen, I don't wish this statement to reflect on the honesty of those present at this meeting, but I'm afraid I must inform you that during the financial year into this month, $150,000 has been embezzled from company funds. The auditors are now checking back over the financial year's ending. Oh, there it is, Mr. Forrest. I knew you'd be interested. Yes, Lily, I am interested. I'd be fired if they knew I played you the tape, but you won't say anything, will you? Not a word. A hundred and fifty thousand. hundred and fifty thousand. That's a lot of money, isn't it? Do you know, Mr. Forrest, I can't even imagine that much money. All I can imagine is the amount that'll fit into a pay on hundred and fifty thousand would need a larger envelope. Oh. Well, thanks for playing me the tape. Oh, pleasure. They'll catch him, I reckon. Who? Well, the one who did it. You can't pinch that much money and win. It's happened before. Evil doers are always found out in the end. Yeah, it's a must in the world of fiction, Lily, but not in real life. You'd be surprised at the amount of money stolen and never recovered. You know, I reckon the person who took it must have some money anyway. Why? Because if he didn't have any money, he couldn't spend any of the stolen money because it would look conspicuous. So he must have a fair amount of money to be able to spend. Do you see what I mean? I think so. Well, would you explain to me? You mean that unless the thief lived in such a position where he could spend the money without attracting attention, it wouldn't be a great deal of use to him. Oh, is that what I meant? Well, I I'd better get back to work and not a word about the tape, Mr. Forrest. That's a promise, Millie. Thanks. Goodbye. They'll catch him, I reckon. Can't pinch that much money and win. Evildoers are always found out in the end. Well, they'll catch him, I reckon. They'll catch him, I reckon. They'll catch him, I reckon. <laughs> Reservation on the chief. The name is Morgan Tree. Thank you. Hello, Morgan. I didn't expect to see you here. Hello, sir. Uh, no, no, I'm being called away. Rather urgent. Did you tell me about him? I think so. Yes, yes, I sent him in. Oh. I see. Nothing serious, I hope. Oh, some family trouble. I thought you were an orphan from the storm. Oh, I, my wife's family, really. They're in Detroit. Hmm. Be back as soon as you can, Morgan. I don't like our senior man to be away for long. Might prove we can do without them. Uh, I'll be back as soon as I can, sir. I took a quick vacation once. No one knew I'd gone, and the company did record business for that fortnight. Bad for the ego. As soon as I can. Goodbye, sir. Bye, Morgan. Fate? Coincidence or contrived? Which, John? Do you know or do you suspect? Or are you here seeing off a friend? I don't run. Walk. Stroll along. Buy a magazine. Leave through it. You've got ten minutes till train time. Don't handle your briefcase as if it contained a fortune. Walk. Don't run. Walk. Hello? It's John Manners, Mrs. Forrest. I'm fine, thank you. Is Morgan there? Oh. No, no, it's not important. Is he going to the office? Yes. All right, I'll catch him there. Hey, by the way, you have some family in Detroit, don't you? I thought you did. Bye-bye. Department, I'd like to speak to Detective Lieutenant Bergen, please. John Manners, Manners and Company. Oh, yes, I believe it's terribly urgent. Oh, all I did was play. 
play him the tape. Oh, please, I... Millie, don't cry anymore. You're wasting a lot of time. He's always been such a nice person. And if there's something exciting to happen and I wanted to share it with someone, I suppose it's... He, he's such a nice man. I, I played him the tape and we talked about the money and, and I said the man would be caught and then he went away and... You're quite right, Millie. He did went away. <laughs> He wouldn't do a thing like that, Mr. Mattis. He's a nice person. Lovely smile. I'm sure his smile is a thing of beauty, Millie. Did he mention anything about his family being ill or anything? No, sir. Thank you, Millie. You may go now. I'm sure he wouldn't touch a penny of the money. Such a distinguished person. No fat or anything. Millie apparently judges one's honesty by the size of one's waistline. Uh, she might be just as good with her judgment as we are with ours. I wouldn't have picked Morgan Forrest. Neither would I. If the fool had stayed put, I don't think we'd ever have suspected him. Did he get the Detroit train? No, no. But don't worry about it, Mr. Manners. It doesn't matter what train he catches, a plane, a car, a bus. He won't be traveling for long. Tell me, uh, why were you at the station anyway? I went down to meet Morgan's replacement. Been keeping it as a surprise for him. Big lift in the firm. More money. Quite a lot more. We'll travel. Pity. Well, he's got the money and he's traveling, but not for long. No matter where he goes, we'll find him. So you'll find him, will you, Lieutenant? You did tell me you'd find Morgan, didn't you? And we will. Of course, you didn't stipulate any time. He is, I presume, in South America by now, spending the company's money at a frantic rate. I'm willing to bet he hasn't left the country. One point you fail to realize, Lieutenant, is that we also want the major portion of our money. The captured person, Morgan Forrest, is no good to us if he's poor. He won't be game to spend any of much of that money. It's been three months since he skipped, and I'm sure 99% of the money's still intact. It's a matter of time, Mr. Manners. Simply a matter of time. Thank you. Leaving so early, Mr. Tree? Yes, I've got a lot to do. Good night. Good night, sir. Oh, could you tell me when I could get a westbound plane from here? Well, there's a travel bureau in the foyer. They should be able to help you. Thank you. When's the next westbound flight from here, please? Any line will do. <laughs> there's one in two hours' time. Thank you. Oh, but I don't think you'll have much chance of getting a seat. They're usually... Well, you're a nice-mannered guy, I must say. Hey, see, they're giving up all hope of finding that guy a skipper with a hundred grand or so for managing company. <laughs> Lucky boy. Yeah, I suppose he is. You suppose? Yeah, say, well, well, what would you do with that much money? I might spend it. Yeah, you see, you're so right. Just lay low for a while and then spend her. Go to South America and live it up a little. <laughs> Have you any idea just how big a bundle makes one hundred grand and then some? I have a vague idea. Yes, sure. Live like a king. Live like a poet in taste. That's what you could do. <laughs> it ain't much, but it's all we got in this town. <laughs> One hotel's about all we ever needed. <laughs> got many people passing through? Here, the first in months. Uh, she's a real boom town, this one. <laughs> Good night. Good night. A real boom town, that's what it is. Population 800 X miles from nowhere. Might be worth investing some money in a town like this. You know something, Morgan Forrest? Oh, sorry, Morgan Tree. I think you've managed to get away with it. A few weeks here, this new beard, and I reckon you're about right for South America. Now, let's see what the outside world is doing. <laughs> Might have known it wouldn't be today's or yesterday's or the day before. Would it be, what, three months ago? Hmm. Hmm. Well, at least I didn't commit murder. Well, it looks a reasonable sort of kid, too. Don't you worry, lad. You'll make it eventually. Verdict of guilty? Oh, right. Electric chair on the 20th of June. It's had to drivel the boys as innocent as possible. Oh, poor kid. He must feel dreadful sweating out a crime he didn't commit. I don't suppose there's no solace in the fact that you're innocent. You'll be just as dead when they throw that switch. If I didn't have my own neck to consider, I'd do something for you, son. I'm sorry, I can't. I... 20th, that's the day after tomorrow. I'm sorry, son, but I can't help you. Hello? 
Hello, it's Matt Galbraith and Associates. I want to speak to Mr. Galbraith. I don't care how busy he is, this is urgent. But never mind who's speaking, I want... It's about a young man whose life is in danger. No, I'm not a representative of any newspaper. I can't see Mr. Galbraith the day after tomorrow of all the stupid... I'm, I'm sorry, madam, I didn't mean to... Hello? Hello? You run and run and run, you beat the police, your own conscience, the insurance people, everybody. But a newspaper in a hick town beats me, and a kid I've never even seen. Will you have my check ready? I'm leaving as soon as possible today. Uh, what time was... Oh, good. Right. Yeah, I'll be on it. Ten o'clock on the 20th of June. Ah, uh, why, why did I have to read that stupid, rotten paper in the first place? Will you get me the New York prison authorities? Thank you. Hello? No, I'm sorry. No, I don't know the number. Well, surely someone can find it for me. It's very urgent. All right, I'll wait. I said I'll wait! I'd like to speak to the prison governor. Yes, it's important. It's terribly important. I can't give you my name. Yes, I know it's unusual, but if you listen for a few minutes, it's something about Philip Young. Yeah, Philip Young. That's right, the murderer. Only he's... Hello? Hello? Operator, look, I lost my connection. I don't care about storms. When can you reconnect the number? It's the New York Prison Authority. All right, all right, I said I'd wait. I'm very sorry if I appear short-tempered. I'm sorry, I said. Yes, yes, I'll be pleased to wait. Hello? Hello? You can't. Well, when would you expect the line cleared? I'd have to phone the maintenance people. Ah, oh, forget it. Well, no one can say you didn't try. But you've got to get out of this place anyway. You've created too much attention. You've got to start running again. to be bothering you so much, Lieutenant, but how are you progressing Not a sign, Mr. Manners, I'm sorry. So, he gets away with it, does he? Not necessarily. But more than likely. Just give us time. You've had as much time as you want. You've had months, but you've still not produced Morgan Forrest. To be frank with you, Mr. Manners, all your talk won't help us produce him. Now look, Lieutenant. You I... look. You've been pestering me for months about your precious money. Now, what are you really worried about, anyway? Once the insurance company realizes no chance of getting the money then back... Then you I'll admit get... there's no... Hope. I said once the insurance company realizes it, they'll pay you the money and it'll be that. That's not the point. I know that. You want to see Morgan Forrest set on the end of a stick, don't you? Naturally. The man's a thief. Would you be so interested in finding him if he stole someone else's money? Mm -hmm. Possibly not. I'm sure not. You'll get your money back one way or another, Mr. Manners, and as an added attraction, we'll eventually find the man who stole it. Talk. It's another small point you haven't given much thought to. What? Maybe he didn't steal your money. Nonsense. We haven't got complete proof, you know. Now, don't bother me with talk like that, Lieutenant. You know as well as I that Morgan Forrest stole that money. I'm a big man in the city, and I'm going to have something to say about the way the law enforcement agencies work, or don't work. Well, it's a free country, so they tell me, Mr. Manor, so you go right on and say what you like to anyone. Meantime, I'll get along to a little work. You never can tell, Mr. Manners. This might be the day we get your money back. <laughs> Meg Forrest speaking. Meg, it's me. Morgan. Where are you? Where have you been? I haven't time to talk now. Where are you? I'm in Buffalo. 
Why haven't you contacted me before? I've been sick with worry. Not a word from you. You just... You listen to me. I'll be in New York sometime today. I want you to meet me. Did you take the money, Morgan? Never mind that. Are the police still hanging around? Not anymore. I gave that up about six weeks ago. Morgan, I'm Book not me sure... a room, will you, with a clarinet and arms in the name of Mr. Tree. Very well, Morgan. I I'll wait there for you. Make sure you're not followed, won't you? I'll try. And don't worry, Meg. It's a little late for that, isn't it? Oh, Morgan, why did you have to do it? I'll see you sometime today. It'll be late. Goodbye, Meg. Goodbye, Morgan. Can I have a seat on the first available plane to New York, please? I'm sorry, sir. Most flights are canceled. Very bad electrical storms. When am I likely to get a seat? It's terribly important. Well, as you're not a booking, I'm afraid you'll have to wait till the priority seats are filled. I'd say about tomorrow night. Oh, thank you. Uh, is there a bus terminal nearby? You got troubles, young fella? I want to get to New York. Urgent? Very. Like a lift? I have to be in New York tonight. Mm, I'll get you there by early tomorrow morning. Maybe earlier. Want to drive all night? I don't know. You drive a car? Yeah. Double with me and we won't hardly need a stop. Thanks very much. It's very nice of you. Forget it, son. I like a speck of company on a long trip. Man can get real tired when he's driving along. Then to go off to sleep. Accident. Hmm. Don't talk much, do you, boy? Not a great deal. Been sitting here wondering what you did for a living. Have you decided? Well, by the way you hugged that there briefcase, I'd say you were some kind of a high executive. All about ready to clinch a big deal in New York. Right? Hmm. Pretty right. Kind of a hobby of mine, guessing what people do for a living. What do you think I work at, son? I don't know. Uh, say, maybe a farmer? Hmm. That's what they all say. I reckon I should have been a farmer. Maybe I wouldn't have flat feet. Though I haven't used my feet much in late years. Late years? Work mainly now on nice soft jobs. I see. <laughs> Funny thing, that. 29 years in New York cop, and people still take me for a farmer. <laughs> well, 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 that's just great. Yeah. What do you like at changing tires, boy? Had to do it sometimes. Uh, with my girth, I got the willpower, but not the physique. Thanks, son. It might put us a little behind schedule, but uh, we'll make it, I guess. She works on automatic jack, so we won't have to manhandle her. Spare ties in the back, son. Thanks for the ride. Pleasure, son. Uh, hey! Yep? You forgot your briefcase. Thanks. And uh, good luck on that deal. I don't need it. Didn't we have enough money for your needs, Morgan? Are you condemning me before the trial? No. Are you going to give yourself up? No, I'm not. Then why come back to New York? That's the one place they're I bound to... I came back because I discovered to my amazement that I still have a conscience. Because in a hick town in Colorado, I was silly enough to pick up a newspaper. What's all that got to do with you stealing money? Nothing. But it all relates to me coming to New York. I got to see someone and then get out again. Just like that? Exactly like that. In that case, I'll be going, Morgan. I'll send for you when I can. That'll be charming. Oh. Don't you even want to know the reason for my coming back? I love you, Morgan. I love you very much. But I keep remembering I have three children to look after. Something you must have forgotten. I can't afford to listen to anything you say if I intend looking after my family. They're my family, too. Are they? One would never imagine it. But did you come back to give yourself up? No. I came Goodbye, back to... Goodbye, Morgan. Meg, will you please... I came back because tonight they're going to execute a kid for murder, and I can prove that he didn't do it. I can prove it because they say he stood on the corner of Fifth and Crescent and pumped a bullet into a man. I came back, Meg, because on the day they say that event took place, 
One of our construction teams had a hole 20 feet deep where the poor kid was supposed to have been standing. I know he couldn't have killed that man, Meg. I know it. That's why I came back. I'm trying to save a human life. That's what I came back for. And if I can do it, and still keep a full hide, I reckon I'm entitled to do it. I'll be a hero to someone. I'll have saved someone from the electric chair. I'm sorry, but Mr. Galbraith sees only by appointment. Does he keep his eyes closed for the rest of the time? If you can tell me your business. No, I can't. Yes, I can. A man has been wrongly accused of murder. I'm awfully sorry, but Mr. Galbraith rarely takes murder cases. They're so messy. Besides, he's out. I'll wait. You positive you saw what you saw? Yeah, I guess you are. Where is he booked? Clarendon Arms? Yeah, I'll take a look. And if it's not on the level, I'll skin you. More people phone about more wrong leads than I can ever think about. It's as far as we're interested in finding your husband, we believe, is in New York. I'm sorry I can't help you. I don't know where he is. Even though you booked him into a hotel? I won't help you, Lieutenant. You can't force me. That's right, I can. You know, it'll sit better with your husband if he gives himself up. I won't help you. Oh, uh, thanks anyway. Goodbye, Mrs. Forrest. <laughs> Are you Galbraith? That's right. Did you defend a kid called Philip Young? Uh, Philip Young? <laughs> oh, yes, I remember. He shot a chap. Did he? He didn't shoot that man, Mr. Galbraith. He didn't shoot that man, and I can prove it beyond any doubt that he didn't. I can prove it. I see. I don't think you do. I read about this in a paper in a hotel room in Colorado. I've been getting here for days. He's got the skids under him for tonight at 10 o'clock. We've got to do something. Uh, I'm afraid, Mr. Uh... Forrest. The forest. You've got to do something. He's innocent, and he's still your client. Don't you want to save the boy? You've got to stay the execution. Uh, Mr. Forrest, as far as this firm is concerned, that case is closed. What? The case is closed. It can't be closed. I'm afraid we can't stand here shouting at each other. Would you step into my office, please? I don't care where I shout. Uh, this way. Mr. Galbraith. I can prove beyond any doubt that the boy you unsuccessfully defended for murder is not guilty. Now, does that get across to you? Uh, Mr. Forrest, may I see that paper? He'll be executed tonight. Will you please phone somebody? It's a rather battered paper, Mr. Forrest. So what? And if you'd taken the trouble to read the date, you'd have seen it referred to a case handled by us in 1953. What? 1953. What is more, the boy was granted a stay of execution by the governor. He was subsequently acquitted. You could have saved yourself a long trip and remained in Colorado. In July, 1953. I'm sorry. So am I. More sorry than you'll ever know. Yes? There are two gentlemen here. You tell them I'm busy. Oh, they want to see Mr. Forrest. Oh, thank you. Someone outside to see you, Forrest. Sorry I couldn't do anything about that other matter. After all, we can't do something about something which occurred so long ago. It's out of our hands. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mr. Morgan Forrest? Yes. We'd like to have a word with you. Come along. Closing door finishes the story. Next week, another key will open another door to another story. Mystery. Romance. Or adventure. All start when a door is unlocked by... The key.